Welcome back to another episode of Chatting Cinema. We're going to see, I'm putting the poster right here, yeah. the Batman tonight. Yeah, we're all wearing Batman shirts. Riddler gang. Riddler gang over here. We're, uh, we're going to give our pre-thoughts real quick. I am very excited for this movie. <sighs> yeah. Um, I think if you listen to any of our podcast episodes or watched anything or just know us, you know we're irrationally yeah. excited for this. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was blasting Giacchino's yeah. The Batman on the yeah. way here. Same. <laughs> I am so ready. I I think the I think the two things I'll note like pre-show wise are one I was trying to temper expectations and I thought I was doing a decent job, but I watched the fandom teaser and the two full trailers before I headed over here, and uh, that went out the window. <laughs> that's, that's gone. Um, and the other thing I'll say, uh, I'm curious, you know, to see it and like hear the opening weekend discourse because I thought this was going to be a bit of a divisive Batman movie. And then I read the first wave of reviews and I thought, oh, never mind, everybody's going to like flat out love this and it's going to be their favorite Batman movie and all that. But as more reviews have come out, I've circled back to thinking that it might be a more divisive Batman movie than some people are thinking of. And I think that that started when Pattinson got cast and there was this absurd discourse like, oh, why would they cast him? But I think that that's sort of tempered as people like saw him in the suit, the, the test footage yep. of him in the suit and the trailers and stuff. But now I'm starting to think like maybe there's going to be some arguments and debate about what this movie's like but i'm super stoked i can't wait to see it and like actually know what it is yeah. i think so too i i'm somebody who really sticks to reviews when they come out i can't stop reading them as soon as i see them i'm reading them i'm, I'm reading the flow um and the one through line that i'm seeing in this is that this is going to be a very different batman movie mm -hmm. than we've gotten before which is like could be a good thing could be a bad thing yeah. but either way i'm i'm excited so that's what I'm here for. Yeah, I mean, I think it boils down to, like we were talking about with Spider-Man, how we have three different really distinct Spider-Mans, and I don't want to see what Christian Bale did. I don't want to see what Val Kilmer did. I don't want to see Michael Keaton. Like any other Batman, I don't want Robert to be anything like them. I want him to be his own Batman. And I think him getting cast has gotten a lot of people to watch other movies that are like not more mainstream things, you know, like Good Time or High Life or The Good Lighthouse. Time. So like, it's interesting because like Robert Pattinson, like, it's like everyone knows him as the vampire dude from Twilight, and now he's playing Batman. So uh, I'm excited because he's on my shirt, and I already <laughs> love him. <laughs> I, I will say this is that that's one other thing that you said that um, because I think this is this is Pattinson's new career definer. You know, no matter I think that this film is going to do great regardless, like financially, um, whether it's divisive or not. I think it's going to make boatloads of money for Warner Brothers, and I think that. It's really hard when you get into a big, like, young adult franchise, something like that. Even going back, you know, Mark Hamill has the Joker and he has these other roles. He's Trickster in The Flash, all this. But he's always going to be Luke Skywalker. And that's from 77 on, you know. And I think that you have actresses like Jennifer Lawrence, who, you know, is an Oscar winner. And she's still Katniss, I think, mm -hmm. in the... In the public mindset and i think daniel, decades since yeah that and i think daniel radcliffe is still harry potter and you mm. know so when you get into those big gigantic franchises i think that there's a tendency for that to follow you and i think that that pattinson is not going to be known as the guy from twilight after this even though he's done so much like you say like good time or lighthouse cosmopolis high life um and he just did tenant and he's yeah. so good in tenant but I think that this is going to be the new thing that, that follows in the rest of his career is this Robert Pattinson is the Batman. We shall see. All right, we will see you right after we see it. Let's do this. <laughs> Flynn, you might want to peek your head there. So we just came out. Pretty amazing, I yeah. would say. I Maybe liked it. Oh, yeah, we got some comics out of it, too. Yeah. So that was neat. Did you guys already log in on Letterboxd? Yeah. I did not yet. Did. Okay, was it five? Oh, it was a five. Okay. I'm going yeah. five as yeah. well. Five stars. Damn, five stars right here, Johnny. Uh, five, yeah, five stars. I'll start us off, because I didn't say this to you guys after we first saw it. I wanted to save it for when we were in the car. But um, without any spoilers, and also I might need a second viewing, mm. I don't think it was until the last 20 minutes of this movie that it became probably my favorite Batman movie. Mm. Live action Batman Bold. movie. I, uh, oh, yeah, Lego Batman's number one. <laughs> I, um, I'm not gonna, again, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but the reason for that, I think, is that, you know, I've been reading a lot of Batman comics lately. Nice um, scholar boy. And I know, right? And like, I, I haven't ever done that before. I've only ever really watched <laughs> movies. So it's nice to kind of have been doing that. 
And I think this is this is it come to life. Like yeah. this is that tagline of the comic book come to life. Right. Like it just feels like it. And if you told me without any other context that this was like an Arkham game adaptation, mm. I'd believe you 100%. The action, mm. the looks. Oh man. Yeah. Ugh. I completely agree with it feeling very Arkham and, you know, like in a sense, I think it's by far the most comic accurate adaptation of Batman. You know, like yeah. there's I mean, some people's favorite parts of Batman is how he interacts with the rest of the Justice League and the rest of the wider DC universe. So we're not going to get that. It is, you know, very grounded and very real and it doesn't feel like we're going to dip into the supernatural stuff and I think Matt Reeves has already said the same like he doesn't really have any interest in that but as far as comic accuracy and and yeah like you said about the Arkham thing like there are specific shots and sequences yeah. and moments where it's like oh that was taken right from there and it's in the same way that you know people were so excited about Spider-Man No Way Home felt like some of the things from Spider-Man PS4 had been taken I think that that's going to be the same thing. And again, to your point about, you know, how people interact with Batman, yeah. the reason that Arkham is held up, like, as the standard is because that is the most comic accurate adaptation of Batman. So really in saying that it's like Arkham, it's saying that it's like Batman comics. Yeah, yeah I just think that we had such high expectations for this movie and we did the same exact thing with Spider-Man yeah. and we tried to lower those expectations just like we do with spider-man and both outcomes worked out pretty good for us yeah um going into this movie i was really just hoping that it would make its own mark in the history of comic book movies and in batman movies and i certainly think that it did that setting itself apart from every other incarnation of the character we've gotten oh, yeah. i think reeves style and then i think pattinson's performance i think they really did a good job of saying this is our take because almost every other Batman movie, it's like, oh, but they did this like this, and they did this like this. And yeah, we took from the Arkham games, but the Arkham games are cinema, and they deserve that recognition. Mm -hmm. um, but I think something fun that's non-spoilery spoilery that we can do is what was your favorite performance from this movie? Because mm -hmm. we're going to go into a spoiler review later this week after our second and possible third viewings, but I want to touch on the performances because I feel like we can get non-spoiler with that. Okay, are we going to add the caveat that Pattinson can't be chosen because Pattinson is easily my favorite Batman? Uh, yeah, mm. let's say not Pattinson because he's a beautiful, yeah, beautiful he, man. Because that would be my pick. So. Yeah, all right, so let's go yeah. non-Batman favorite performances. I will preface all of this by saying, again, I think I need a second viewing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, This is our gut reactions. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's kind of impossible for me to narrow down a favorite performance in this film, like, singularly. But I will say... This is my favorite Gotham City portrayal on Ooh. film. I love Gotham as a good character. Job. Everyone yes. feels, yeah. not just Gotham the city, but like the mm. people in Gotham. Yeah. It feels so lived in. This finally feels like a Gotham City that like, I don't want to live in. No. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, I don't know. Keaton, Keaton's Gotham look kind of fun. So I get exactly <laughs> what you're saying. Yeah, like I would be scared at night, you know, like in this Gotham City. I'd be city. scared during the day in this oh, Gotham. Oh my God, yeah. So it's, I would say it's that as a whole and that portrayal of Gotham and the people that's in it. Answer. That's my favorite performance in this movie. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. That, that Reeves and co. really nailed that yeah. element of bringing Gotham as a city to life. Um, man, that's tricky because I feel like naming five people off the dome, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to go with Zoe Kravitz because... Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, you know, this is non-spoilery, but the trailers kind of sell, especially with one of the trailers being called The Bat and the Cat, yeah. like, they kind of sell that this Catwoman is more central to this Batman story, and that's how it is in Batman mythos. Catwoman is really up the ranks of being a central character, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's really hard to step into that role when you have Michelle Pfeiffer's Sorry. performance. Whoa. My apologies. No, 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 it's just Siri. Yeah, Sorry, guys. I was getting excited about the, the Zoe Kravitz performance. But, like, when you have you. Michelle Pfeiffer's performance in Batman Returns, which is so iconic and really left a stamp, and then Anne Hathaway's Catwoman, I think, really fits what Nolan was doing with his trilogy, I think that Zoe Kravitz knocks it out of the park. And that's a really tough line to walk. Mm. And so I'm going to pick her just because she had the heaviest lifting. And I think that that was the, the performance that impressed me the most outside of Pattinson. 
I think I would say every person in this movie brought their A game. They really nailed it. And I think in our spoiler review, we're going to kind of go one by one of why we loved these casting choices so much. Yeah. But if I had to pick one right now, it's got to be that little freaky boy, Paul Dano. <laughs> because yeah, Johnny said it immediately after the movie ended, not spoiler, he was terrified of him and truly was a terrifying character. Yeah. I think the way Reeves took what we know of the Riddler, and again, we're coming back to the Arkham games, but what we know of him in the comics, because let's be real, Jim Carrey, you're a great dude, but that is not really a great representation of what the Riddler is. Like, it, whatever, we're not getting into that. But <laughs> I think that this interpretation of the Riddler is so perfect for today, and it is so real, but it's also still him from the comic books. Mm. And that finding that balance is something Nolan did a lot, that I was like, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. Like, because I just rewatched the Dark Knight trilogy, and I'm like, you made these characters who are, like, silly, like Scarecrow, feel so real and scary. But I think Reeves accomplished that once again with Dano. And that's just the gut check, because honestly, they all are worthy of praise. And I mean, Gianni, I know you want to talk about your boy, Michael Giacchino's score, oh, because that beautiful. shit was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think anyone could unseat Zimmer, and then yeah. it happened. Tonight, yeah, so. the score was just so good, because the amount that they used different elements and we were talking about this yeah. as soon as the credits started and we were hearing it again like oh wait a second this was a clue like little things like that is really cool and i feel like this movie was just so smart and like i remember when they announced three hour runtime i was like oh like don't get me wrong i'm in but like i feel like that makes it less accessible for people mm. and i think our theater that which was entirely full and imax preview screening had a great time with the three hour on time. I didn't hear anybody complaining about how long it was. Yep. Pretty yeah. much everybody seemed pretty stoked to be there, which is nice. Cause I mean, Flynn's green Knight story will always make me laugh, but yeah, I mean, yeah. anything else we want to talk about? I think that speaks to just how riveting this film is yeah. too. Like from start to finish, my eyes were kind of glued to the screen, you know, just to rattle off. Like we just saw Uncharted a few weeks ago and like, I checked my watch a few times, and that's a pretty short movie. Yeah, yeah just over two. But here, yeah, like I like I didn't even I didn't less. even look down at my watch. Like no. it was just I was on the screen the whole time. Felt, maybe that was IMAX too, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, it yeah. felt like the three hours were necessary too. Because sometimes, like like Eternals got a lot of criticism for its runtime, mm. even though we all generally liked it. Like it's a very valid criticism because when you want to bring in an audience, you don't want to make them sit there for super long and get bored. Mm -hmm. But I really think that this movie, especially as it ages, as we see it more, we're just going to be like excited to see every scene again. Yeah. yeah. Hear the score again. See these great performances. And again, it, it begs to be rewatched. Yeah. That's another thing too. Absolutely. And that's like, that's why I want to see it again before I really give like a final take. Like, is this my favorite Batman movie? And you know what? I think it is. But, yeah. uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I'm curious to see how how rewatches go because, uh, to your point about, you know, kind of being glued to the screen, I think that that it's really well plotted and paced, and so watching kind of the mystery because this is you know it, it's a psychological thriller. It's uh, everybody's compared it to to Fincher's stuff, but it's true, you know. But I don't think it's like a cheap imitation. It, it's you know organic and and it feels necessary to make those comparisons, but. It stands on its own but now that we kind of have the answers what's it going to be like going back what clues are going to be there as to to how it all shakes out so i am really curious to see like what that three hour runtime feels like in round two and three yeah because it it did we said this coming out of it that it you feel the three hours it feels like a lot of stuff has happened but it doesn't feel like a bad three hours. It feels like something that you could just keep doing for hours and hours longer. Like, and I think that that speaks to Reeves and what he's done and really the actors and their performances because I just wanted to keep seeing like these characters interact with each other and like what happened next. And yeah, I could, I could have kept watching it all night. Like it was fantastic. So those are our sort of initial thoughts on the Batman. We'll be doing a few more videos, I'm sure, yeah. after this one. But uh, go see it this weekend, because it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm sure everybody will. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I think we're all seeing it again on Saturday, so maybe expect a, a full spoiler yeah. review after that yeah, once we've soon. digested it a bit yeah. more. Because, you know, it felt weird seeing a brand new movie on a Tuesday night. 
Yeah. And uh, it was dope. I'm glad yeah. we don't have to dodge Twitter all week. The rest of my week is entirely thrown off. As far as yeah. I'm concerned, tomorrow's like Saturday. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> what it <laughs> feels <laughs> like. But hey, when Saturday comes around, we'll be watching this feud ah. again. We still <laughs> only be thinking of Batman yeah. for the, my coming days. Alrighty. Well, we will catch you in the next one.